Hi, this recording is regarding making accessible PDFs and why. So let's get into it. What is a PDF? We use that term often, but a PDF is, stands for the Portable Document Format. It's usually abbreviated as PDF. It's the file format that Adobe Acrobat products use. The PDF format provides users the ability to view and share electronic documents conveniently and reliably, so it's often used. In that case, what is an accessible PDF? If we want to make an accessible PDF, it's important we understand what differentiates a regular PDF from one that's accessible. So a PDF document is considered accessible if it can be used and accessed by everyone. That would include people with disabilities, such as those who are blind, visually or otherwise impaired, or colorblind. So an accessible PDF makes it easier for people with disabilities to access the PDF documents with the aid of assistive technology software and devices. That would include screen magnifiers, screen readers, speech recognition software, text-to-speech software, and other devices and braille displays. So in order for the PDF to be picked up and read by these devices, it needs to be considered accessible. How can I tell? Unfortunately, by physically looking at a PDF, you cannot usually tell whether it's accessible or not because you're not using an actual device that will read or uh, review the PDF in a way that it needs to. So there are some steps to take, which I'm going to show you in a minute here on how to do that. Uh, but let's think about what we can do to prepare our PDF to be accessible and less work later on. So characteristics to look for when you have an accessible PDF is searchable text. Because a lot of times a PDF is one large image, you cannot actually search the text. Um, and that becomes a problem for these different devices. So a document that consists of scanned images of text is inaccessible because essentially you can't search the text and it's, it, they're just images. So it's important that you convert the scanned images of text to searchable text and you could use OCR. Thankfully, Adobe makes that pretty easy to do as we'll look at in a second. But that's something to think about is is your text searchable? Next, alternative text descriptions. Some readers cannot uh, read document features such as images in interactive form fields. Um, maybe it's an icon or an image. So you need to provide an alternative text, some sort of a description, so that can help um, readers be able to understand the material as well. Um, you need to choose a specific document language that way the, the PDF will enable a screen reader to switch to appropriate language. And also making sure that whatever security you have um, isn't restricting users from printing, copying, extracting, adding comments, etc. Um, we want to make sure that that doesn't interfere, interfere with any of the screen reader's ability to convert on-screen text to speech. Additionally, um, interactive form fields. If a PDF has um, any type of fillable information, you want to make sure that um, it must be interactive so it lets users enter values into form fields. So one of the things you'll check is that you don't have any areas on the form that can actually be interactive. Um, navigational aids such as links, bookmarks, headings, table of contents, presets, tab order for form fields, um, these navigation aids assist users and readers uh, to understand the document without reading it completely through. Again, this also allows for the screen readers or other accessible devices to pick up on the information. Fonts that allow characters to be extracted to text. So fonts and accessible PDFs must contain enough information for Adobe to extract all the characters and so this way that it can be displayed on a screen. If it can't extract that information, then it's not able to be read out loud. Reading order and document structure tags. So 
Um, the way that a document is read and presented needs to make sense to the user and in turn a screen reader or other text to speech tool. And it requires that the document be, document be structured and defined in a reading order. So these again are all things that um, when we check with Adobe, we'll be able to confirm whether these are working or not or whether you need to fix them. But going forward, it's always helpful to think about these items so that you can prepare yourself. If you're creating a PDF from scratch, think about these items. You know, do you have fillable areas? Do you have texts that are images? You know, you're going to need to make sure that these are open and available. Um, if you need to fix it, that's totally fine. But if you're aware of it, it makes it that much easier going forward. You might want to think of it as a checklist. When creating an accessible PDF, certainly you may forget something and that's okay because we're going to make sure that we um, perform a check each time in Adobe. Um, but again, if you're looking for a checklist, a thought is consider it before you convert a document to PDF, right? If you're using a Word document or Google Doc or something, think about what is needed. Any um, fillable form fields and descriptions, tab order, any other accessible features to the PDF, tag the PDF, evaluate it, and then repair the problems. Um, so that's your kind of think ahead strategies for creating PDFs from the start. Let's talk about the options within Adobe. There are features that Adobe Acrobat has made um, to make the reading of a PDF more accessible and to allow us who are creating them to actually create accessible PDFs um, using Acrobat. So there's three options with Adobe. You can make PDFs accessible, you can do a check for accessibility, and then you can have a report that's giving you the accessibility status. Um, so making PDFs accessible is an action that will automate a lot of the tasks for you. So it's kind of going through that checklist that's checking for all of the, uh, the different pieces that will make your PDF accessible. Um, and it will try to find and fix as many as possible. Um, and then again, with the checking accessibility, it's a, it's a full check in which you, assuming you've already done everything, this will just check it for you and give you um, information. And then the report will summarize all of the findings. So if you have made your a PDF accessible, you've checked it, you want to report on it because it will tell you, um, here are all the items that have worked and here's what's failed and what might need to be fixed. And it will link you to the tools and the descriptions of each one so it can help you assist in fixing those problems. Um, <clears throat> some are going to be required for the um, WCAG 2.0 and some are not, um, but it's good to know. So you want to go through all of that. So we're going to take a minute here and look at that right now. Okay, what I've done here is I've opened um, Adobe Acrobat and I have opened a specific uh, document and so you can do that with any of yours and this I'm going to start from scratch and do all the accessibility for this particular PDF so you can see how that works all of this all of these steps are in this slides presentation along with on the website under the disability services department so you'll always have a chance to go back and double check but as you'll see here uh, Adobe really does make it <clears throat> nice to go through so the first thing I want to do is over here on the right, I have all of these different tools and I actually want to go down to the bottom where it says more tools. And when I do that, I'm going to scroll down until I find um, action wizard. Okay. So it's under customize action wizard. I'm going to press that. You'll see what happens now is I've got this action list on my right side. It starts with make accessible, prepare, prepare for distribution, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to make accessible by selecting the first one. And now what you can see is that um, it will give you basically your step-by-step. -step. So prepare. First, these are things that um, it's letting me know I should probably prepare in advance. So set a title and ensure it displays in the window title bar. Okay, so I'm gonna press um, I'm going to press on the first one, add document description. So there's my title. If there wasn't a title there, you certainly want to make sure you put one in there. If you think any of the other items need to be filled in, you should do that and then press OK. 
And then once I've done that, <clears throat> I have to say leave as because I'm good with it. Press OK. You'll see that I've gotten a check mark next to that uh, piece. So I'm done with that one. Set open options. OK, done that. Recognize text using OCR. As I mentioned earlier, if I have anything here that is images, I need to um, use OCR to recognize it as text. So I'm going to select that and it's going to say, okay, what language, searchable image. I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to press OK. So it's going to take, it, depending on how large your document is, it may take a minute or two. So mine is done. Then it's saying detect form fields. So again, this is another step on our checklist. If looking at this, is there any areas where it should be open for people to fill it in? Um, so <clears throat> it's going to ask me, is this intended to be a fillable form? If so, then I need to have Adobe detect the form field. In this case, as you can tell, it's really just an instruction sheet. So I'm going to skip this step because there is not meant to be any fillable. Uh, it's not meant to be a fillable form. Okay, so that's done. Set tab order properly. Okay, so that's going to do that for me. Okay, that was step one. Next, I'm going to go down to the second phase here, which is set reading language. And once I do that, I'm given this um, option to set a reading language. So I'm going to pick English, but you could select from a number of other options as well. Press OK, and I, I have satisfied that requirement. Auto tag the document. Okay. Going to do that and then set alternative text. So it's going to detect all of the figures in the document <clears throat> and display any figures that are missing alternative text. I'm going to press OK. So it's giving me um, this area right here. It wants me to explain what this is. So I can um, describe it, I can explain it's a decorative figure, whatever it may be. Um, so I would probably rewrite the information in here. Um, but for whatever reason, it's picking up it up as a um, image. So I'm going to just describe what it is there. Save and close. So that appears to be the only thing that comes up for the alternative text. So I'm good there. But if you had others, it would continue down your page or your document or pages, and you would just fill in alternative text for each one of those. Sometimes it's um, icons um, or if it's pictures and things like that. Now I have done all of the prep work, okay? So now I'm gonna run the accessibility full check. And so what it's saying here is I, I usually leave all of these here um, and I leave them all checked, let them do, it, do their work here and I let them start checking. Okay, so as you can see, what happens now is I have the left side open and I've got, it says document, two issues. Okay, so after doing all that prep work, that did obviously a significant amount of work. Um, it does say I have a few, just two issues, but it looks like they want me to manually check it. So this is when you need to decide what's next. Um, I can go to logical reading order. As you can see here, it has a question, needs manual check. So it doesn't really tell me a whole lot. And the same with color contrast. Um, but it looks like all the other areas, and if I open them, you can see pass, 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 pass. So that's what I want. That's really great. Um, that means all of this information is, has been passed. It's going to work correctly with a screen reader and um, be accessible for all those with disabilities or otherwise. Then down here in headings, I've got one more. Um, and appropriate nesting failed. So what I can do is... If it opens up, sometimes it will give me more information. And sorry, it's at the bottom of the screen here. And it was ele one element. So it's failed. So I so if I'm not sure how to fix this, what I will often do is I'll go over here to um, to the top of this accessibility checker because I know it's done a really good job. But if I want to understand this, um, I can actually do a couple of things. So first I'm on this uh, appropriate nesting failed element one. I can skip the rule or I can explain it. So what this does, it's gonna actually link me over to the Adobe um, PDF accessibility help page, which is really great because some of this is still new to me and to others. And so understanding what this means and how to appropriately fix it is important. So in this case, it's bringing right to headings, appropriate nesting. This rule checks nested headings. 
So when it fails, they're not nest, these headings are not nested properly. So you want to find the list um, and then you want to create elements or change the type of elements and so forth. Okay. And so the other thing to note, while it's important and certainly helpful, if you're having, sh you know, if you think this is appropriately nested, it does say that this, the WCAG section, um, it's not required. This is only an, an advisory technique. Okay. So this is kind of like above and beyond. Um, so if it's inappropriately nested, you can try to uh, fix it. You can, you know, certainly search some additional uh, resources. Um, but again, this is not 100% required. It's just an, it's something to be above and beyond to be helpful. Um, so I could, I could fix that. So I can go back to my document and I can do the same thing here. So when it says color contrast and I go up here, um, it will say explain and it will do the same thing. And it will bring me here and it will explain to me. And this will happen for anything that fails. Um, you can actually go to the appropriate help page by selecting that um, information. So just to show you real quick, and I can um, drill down to see what specific issues I'm having. And then when I select on any of the issues, I can um, right click and I can either say, you know what, let's pass it, fail it, skip the rule, explain it. You know, once I've maybe tried to fix it, I can check it again. Okay. And you can also do the same thing up here um, with this little icon on the top left. It will get, give you the same options. And then you can see a full report. So if I show a report, it's a little bit different looking. Um, it's, it's, it's basically the same idea, but what will happen here now is you're like, okay, well, what exactly is, okay, this is all passed. This says logical reading order. Okay. And then if I select this again, it brings me to the a direct link where it will help me to decide um, how to fix it and whether I need to fix it or do any further um, help. So it's really great if you want to look at the report as well. And that's found up here um, as well. So there are a few options. So we're in really good shape so far. Um, but if I wanted to continue to see how to fix everything, I can certainly just go to these links. Or again, I can go back to my accessibility checker and get the link from there as well by right clicking and um, pressing explain. <clears throat> okay. And so this will tell me, you know, again, this is an, an option where um, it is important that I make sure that it's correct, that the logical reading order is in place. Um, so it just need to make sure that the primary language is, is set and so forth. So this will walk us through everything we need to do to fix any of the issues that may come up within our accessibility checker. So that's what you want to do. You want to make sure to go through each piece. Um, if it's required and necessary, um, certainly fix it, make it as, as accessible as possible. Um, we want to make sure it is because it's also very, very important that, um, anything that we're putting on the website or really uh, displaying at all, it's not only is it important for those with disabilities, but we want to make sure we're allowing for anyone um, and everyone the ability to read this material. And so you'll also note that these are very important to complete in order to put anything on the website um, and so forth. So uh, please be aware that this is important, that you should be getting in the habit of doing this for every single PDF regardless. And it is also nice to know that you have this ability to see every piece that's been checked and you can confirm I've done it. Here's my report. Um, and just know that you've really made it that much easier for everyone, um, with whatever abilities to uh, read it. So keep that in mind. Hopefully all of those strategies will put you in a good place. I want to leave you with a thought that you you probably already have. But here are some statistics to keep in mind, okay? 88% um, of visually impaired users have a mobile screen reader, okay? So it's not, a, it, it can be on the go. That is a significant number. So we wanna make sure any material that we have that's available mobily or otherwise is accessible, okay? And there's just a too far um, percent of pages that are free from any of these conformance um, errors. So we want to make sure that we're ahead of it. And unfortunately, accessibility lawsuits are on a rise, um, very, very high uh, for these exact reasons. So for all of these, I want to remind you that it does 
um, really, it's really smart of us to take the time um, to consider all those involved and considering the, the great work that Adobe can provide us, it's really not that difficult. Uh, but if you run into any issues, you have questions, or I can help in any way, please let me know. Um, and I hope that this is a good start for you to get going with uh, making accessible PDFs. Thank you.